Hen March outlaws cops. In those wild early days, Hen March found herself surrounded by cops. They weren't really cops in any official sense, just a group of men who took it upon themselves to meander around town with weapons, asking random people random questions. You know, cops. Hen March, newly elected leader slash boss slash mayor slash whatever of hearts, had not yet appeared in every chamber of the city. Her face was not yet an icon, a stenciled spark on every empty wall, so this group of cops did not recognize her. And being cops who did not recognize a person, they stopped her. What are you doing here? Now, as large as Hen March looms in our history, she was also a very small woman. She looked up at the half dozen men, their drawn blades resting jauntily on their shoulders, their eyes suspicious, frightened, even if not of her specifically. What am I doing here? Had March's voice, which had always come from somewhere else, somewhere she did not completely remember, sliced through the dusk like lightning. What are you doing here? Because I am the newly elected leader slash boss slash mayor slash whatever of hearts. I led from the front in the war with the violets. I defended the keep at Mushroom Mountain for 10 days and 11 nights. I wrote the constitution and I don't recall there being anything in there about cops. Seeing that her anger, and her resume, which the normally humble Hen March tried very hard to only reference when she absolutely had to, or just wanted to, had frightened the men, Hen March smiled and took a seat on a nearby bench. Of all the memories they took out of our head before exiling us, they somehow forgot to take this one, that the only way to keep people from constantly murdering each other is to let armed bullies wander around and threaten to put them in cages for years, decades at a time. The absurdity. We don't need that. And, and I know that when that's the only definition of safety we have in our heads, living without it can be scary. What if someone does something bad? How will we protect ourselves? These are valid questions. And of course, there will be problems. People will steal things, spouses will beat on each other, tempers will flare, and someone will lunge at someone else with a knife. And yes, we need to be prepared to deal with all of these problems and issues and situations. But too many of us here deal with and immediately think, punish. We assume people are terrible and set up a whole system to slap them around for being terrible. Or we see the absolute worst examples of how terrible we can indeed be. The serial killers and cannibals and assume that we have to order our entire society around them. Put all of our wealth and resources into dealing with them. So no matter how few of them there are or how ineffective those efforts end up being, we just keep doing it. But what if? What if deal with? meant something else? What if it meant heal the harm? What if it meant do everything we can to prevent the harm from happening in the first place? Our constitution states, when a problem comes up, we figure it out together. My critics have told me that this is too vague, but what's vague about it? When a problem comes up, we figure it out together. Tell me, is it more wise or more logical to say when a problem comes up, we will call on a gang of unaccountable armed strangers who are very likely also bullies and bigots with authoritarian personality complexes to show up an hour or two later, push people around and maybe throw someone in a cage for 10 years and call that a problem solved? No. No cops. Neighbors, family, helpers, experts, medics, shamans, scrappers, friends of friends, preachers, healers, mechanics, witches, in-laws, volunteers, whatever, we'll figure it out, but no cops. The men nod nervously and scatter. Whether they were moved by her words or by her reputation as the fiercest fighter the young moon had ever known, only the future can say.